If I ask for $10, do you lend me? Okay, what about $100? Wow, yes, you are really generous, man. Yes, right? I am increasing the amount. What about $1,000? Do you still lend me? Oh, what kind of salary does he have? Ha, huh, you love me so much. <laughs> okay, bro, me too. This time, I'm gonna increase solid. I need $100,000. Would you lend me? No. Yeah. At the end, I got my answer. Why do you think he would not lend that amount? He actually has money. Now, when you want to get into such a debt relationship, the party you want to borrow will know for sure. How much income do you have? Anyway, I asked for $100,000 and he would not lend. There is two reasons. First, he knew that I could not repay the step with the income I had. Second, my income level is above the turkey average. Okay, but I have asked so many people and the large amount of debt that I have now exceeded the limit that I can pay back with my higher income. So, because of these two reasons, my borrowing request rejected. In short, he was like, I'm gonna give this debt. What if I can't get my money back? Let's consider this at international level now. It has been mentioned a lot, but when we put the international open data in front of them, they get upset. Does Turkey's debt really too much? The concept of less or more is relative. So, how can we remove this relativity and answer this question? Very simple. We look at Turkey's total income and then we look at its total debt. This is the way how the whole world measures considering if a country has too much debt or not. What is Turkey's GDP? Approximately $750 billion. Okay, how much debt does Turkey have? It is almost $270 billion or something like that. On a rough estimate, Turkey owes a third of its income. Now, think like that. You have a monthly income of $6,000 and uh, you owe a third of that, which is around $2,000 or something like that. Can we say that you have a lot of debt now? Of course not. Let's compare on the basis of countries. Japan's debt almost three times of its income. The ratio of Italy, France, the US and the UK debt to income is around 1.5 times. You see, Turkey's situation is at a very reasonable level in terms of debt to GDP ratio. We can even say that Turkey competes with powerful countries such as Denmark, Sweden, Finland, Switzerland and the Netherlands in terms of debt to GDP ratio. Because the ratio of Turkey's net debt to GDP is better than these countries. Secondly, we need to check it out debt per capita. There is also the per capita debt account when comparing these countries. Let's take a look at this chart. Do you know Turkey's rank? It's around 27th. So, which are the other 26 countries? The US, Japan, Germany and so on. No matter how many developed countries you can think of, they are all in these 26. Another issue is, debt is a measure of size. For example, the world's largest economy is the world's most indebted country. The largest company in the world is the company with the most debt. The biggest football club in the world is the club with the highest debt. Okay, let's make a consideration. Imagine you are sitting at a table with Bill Gates and your newly graduated lawyer cousin. And assume also you were a very rich man. Your lawyer cousin and Bill Gates both needs $1 million. I'm asking to you, to whom do you comfortably lend money? Of course Bill Gates, right? You know why? Because Bill Gates is the richest man in the world. He has companies, he has yachts, floors, skyscrapers. What happened? The strong, the big, the one with a reputation can borrow much more easily and a lot, right? Look, I'm not saying it is morally right, but that's the nature of that relationship. Another important issue need to be checked is how much of the debt belongs to the government. In fact, one of the most important points to consider is how much of this foreign debt belongs to the state. In Turkey, during 90s, 70% of total foreign debt belongs to the state and the other 30% belongs to the private sector, banks, companies. So think like that. Assume there are $100 billion of debt. 
70 billion dollars of this used to belong to state and the other 30 billion dollars belongs to private sector but today this ratio has completely reversed 70 percent of the external debt belongs to the private sector and 30 percent of the debt belongs to the state So, what does the private sector do with that amount of debt? When companies start a project, they start with borrowing money. All countries of the world, medium or large scale companies, it doesn't matter. They have all the same behavior. Because it's finance, I mean global. It doesn't change country by country. So why? In order to use the cash in the most effective way, to share financial and cash risks with the project and financial institutions. All the hotels, shopping malls, private universities you see around you, all of them have been built by project finance, which means that. Another issue, why do financial institutions lend to them? Very easy to answer. They look at the cash or non-cash assets they bring as a collateral. Plus, they are assessing the project revenues. At the end, they lend accordingly. And these financial institutions never finance 100% of the cost. Generally, they lend 80% of the total cost maximum. The borrower have to use 25% of its equity. Because the lender wants to see that the borrower also takes the responsibility, which means sharing risk. Since so much debt is given to private sector, it means that the companies, banks have sufficient collateral to borrow and the projects to be financed are profitable and have low risk. There is also a very important point that we should not miss. Since the private sector has so much debt, that means there are so many projects and invested in return, right? In other words, the economy has grown and the employment opportunities has increased. Now, when they say, Turkey has too much debt, you open and show this video. You are explaining one by one without getting bored. Fake information spreads fast. We will strive to spread the truth.